Hey everyone, welcome to the Off Hub live stream. Uh, today's guest is going to be Robin Jelinek, and um, uh, she channels a group of spirits collectively known as Athena in Truth, in Truth, and another spirit outside of that group called Shiva. So of course I'm going to have her explain more about that and talk to us about that, uh, but first, uh, later on, there will be a segment that uh, where Robin will take some questions. So if you are on YouTube, Facebook, uh, or Twitch, please make sure to submit your question with three asterisks before it. Uh, that just means to me that it's directed towards the guest and not uh, regular chatter in the chat rooms. Uh, of course, uh, on Telegram, uh, there's a live stream going as well uh, via voice only. So you can actually ask uh, Robin a question directly if you're part of that group right now. Uh, in the description you will see uh, the Telegram group link. You can install it on your phone or on the computer and uh, when the time comes simply uh, tap the little button where it looks like a person raising their hand and that puts you in my queue which means you will be up next to ask the question when the time is right. So also in the description uh, before, we be uh, before we begin uh, I've included all the links that Robin provided me. So please check them out and uh, see whatever else Robin has to offer there. So um, without any further ado, I think everything else is good to go. Let me unmute Robin and bring her in. Welcome, Robin. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks very much for doing this. Uh, it was very short notice and the uh, people watching this, they always know I'm always doing something short notice or some kind of problem was overcome. So I'm glad you're here. Thank you. Glad to be here. Well, what I wanted to ask you first, um, as I usually do with first time guests, uh, if you could please get into your background information, how everything started for you, how, how did you get to channel and uh, then we'll take it from there. Okay. Um, well, I would say back uh, as early as my early 20s. I'm 63 now, so that's quite a few years ago. Um, very interested in uh, knowing more about uh, what I was, who I was, why I was here, what the real meaning of life is. And um, I did a lot of reading. I uh, was very interested in uh, just about every type of spiritual book that I could get my hands on. So I really spent over uh, a lot of years, uh, my entire lifetime, uh, reading about all different types of modalities uh, in the healing field, uh, in channeling, in uh, different practices, whatever it might be. And, um, you know, during that time, uh, my husband and I were uh, from northern Wisconsin, a small town called Rhinelander, and uh, we were running a water well drilling business there at the time, and we had uh, two sons that went to school there. And it wasn't until they went off to college where uh, I really went through a sense of loss. Uh, it was a difficult time for me because I really enjoyed having my family close by and um, was really connected to being a mother. And I really delved into more of spiritual uh, practices and understandings. And um, pretty short time after the kids went away to college, I experienced, uh, uh, ex uh, they call it a kundalini rising. And um, that really was a confirming moment for me because all these years of study and reading and um, hearing about chakras, about these experiences, um, I believed in them, but to really have that experience was really a confirming moment for me. And from that, it just launched a whole nother uh, area of interest. And so I spent the next uh, 20 years um, going through that Kundalini rising and all the changes that come with it and reading lots of material and study. And uh, in that process, uh, ended up in the position I am in now as a channeler. Uh, so to explain how it happened, I don't think it's a prerequisite that someone needs to awaken their Kundalini to become a channeler, but I think it's an attractive quality. Uh, that can cause uh, a group of channelers, uh, people you're channeling, to want to use you. Um, it really creates an elevation in your energy uh, and an ability uh, for you to um, transmit that energy even in the presence of others uh, during this time when consciousness is really rising. So uh, that's the understanding that I have of it anyway. But um, yeah, so it's really been a whole lifelong process. And uh, now the result is uh, the last few years I've become a channeler and and I do lots of private sessions. I've written a book uh, recently that was on the bestseller list of Amazon. It's called Choose Your Universe, an Exercise in Freedom. Um, I'm offering courses uh, coming in July on my website uh, to actually help people uh, to get the lives that they are meant to have um, as a human. And so uh, my sister Heidi uh, Frelick works very closely with me in all of these endeavors. So it's really a great help to me to have a family member 
in support uh, while I do this. So that kind of gives you a, a pretty uh, general idea. Um, and if you have any other questions you'd like me to answer about the channeling experience in itself, um, I'd be happy to answer those for you. Well, uh, Robin, what we talked about that a little bit before the show, but um, tell us about just generally what the, I guess, uh, support was for, for you when you first started doing this. Were they friends that were coming forward, uh, you know, being okay with this? Were there people that kind of, you know, looked at you in a weird way? Please tell me a little bit about that. Um, well, I didn't tell a whole lot of people and people are finding out now because I'm very public about it and I'm getting more comfortable with that uh, aspect of it in the beginning. Um, it is kind of one of those things where you realize even that is an expansion in your consciousness. You know, in the beginning, you're like, oh, I don't want anybody to find out. I could be embarrassed and, you know, they might think I'm crazy. Uh, and then um, actually the group said to me, um, we would really like you to become less of who you think you are and more of who you really are. And that was kind of a confirming moment for me because pretty much everything that everyone else believed about me, I believed about myself. And in this process, um, I've really been able to uncover that there's so much more available to you and in what you are than what you think you are as a human and when you can really get the um the assistance of uh, that higher part of yourself in the creation of your life uh it's really fulfilling really gratifying uh, really blissful uh state to be in so um i'm getting more and more alignment with that so as far as who did i tell um my, my family, my children, my husband, uh, my one sister. Um, I'm very close to my boys uh, and their significant others. They don't have a problem with it. They use it. They love it. Um, a few close friends, but not a lot. Uh, some are just finding out and very surprised by it. Uh, so that's basically how it's gone. You know, there is a certain amount of... Uh, uh, you know, it's not something for everybody, and I really honor that in people. I'm not here to change anybody's beliefs or to tell them that their religion isn't correct or anything like that. Um, I just feel like the people that uh, are going to be aligned with what it is I do will be drawn to me. So I don't run around saying, hey, you know, this is what I do. You know, I'm, I'm a channeler and this is what I believe. Uh, that's not what I do. I let it come to me, and I also honor my inner knowing uh, of where it is okay to share that and where it's not. So, uh, Robin, can you uh, please go a little bit into kind of, I guess, I don't know if, you should, if I should call it a set of messages uh, that are coming through the collective versus uh, Shiva. And if you could, if there is there a difference, you know, and uh, just please elaborate on that. Yeah. Um, well, I actually have two things going on. So I had this Kundalini rising uh, in my mid 40s, I would say that was about 25 years ago. And um unknown to me this is now i know more because i have actually studied it more and i understand it on a much deeper level um i really experienced every aspect of that uh experience that someone could going through it i actually had a partial rising which created uh, a lot of what they call a dark night of the soul or a feeling of uh, disconnection not really enjoying the things that i used to enjoy uh, everything seemed kind of flat in life and that went on for a couple of years and but i i now know that one of the reasons i experienced uh all these different things or aspects to that kundalini rising is so that I, now i can really assist anybody who's going through it because there really is literally nothing that i haven't experienced on that journey and so over the period of 25 years um this process that you go through there's lots of bodily movements lots of kriyas uh lots of things going on that uh you don't understand at first and uh the, the veering off or the partial rising that i'm talking about um, it must have hit some blockages, you know, maybe my body wasn't fully ready for it. And and again, now I know that it was more that I needed to experience that so that I could maybe assist someone else that goes through that experience. Um, but overall, uh, it has what what's really happened is I've come, come to the understanding that I have kind of two things going on. I made this connection uh, to the Athena group, uh, which is a, a, a group of a number of entities that have lived before and not. Yeah. And so um, they they communicate uh, what is called an emerged way or where all the consciousnesses together um, come together and then answer questions when they are called upon. And the other uh, Shiva energy that you spoke of earlier in the broadcast is really uh, another consciousness, which is what kundalini energy is. Everyone has it at the base of their spine. And once that uh, energy becomes activated, it makes its way up through your entire system. And when it reaches the crown, uh, this is the Shiva energy or uh, the male uh, energy. The divine feminine actually makes her way through everything in the body until it finally merges at the crown. And at this point, it becomes a, a transmittable energy or shakti that can actually offer to other people. Um, and at this point, um, it took 25 years for me, hopefully 
hopefully uh, others wouldn't have to take that long. But um, now that it has reached that point uh, in future uh, times from now, I will be doing um, energy transmissions or where I actually uh, give Shakti or it's like a push to the energetic system of a human to uh, actually help them out a little bit with some of the things that maybe took me 25 years that this could actually cause uh, an awakening to happen a little bit quicker. Um, and, in, and to explain that a little bit more, um, nothing really happens in a human's life that they don't agree to. Uh, your high part or I don't know if you'd call it a high part or your God source, uh, whatever you want to call um, in all that is, uh, it supports you. Uh, it's in support of you as a human. And so I couldn't offer anything to anyone uh, without that connection uh, being okayed by the human uh, to its counterpart uh, in all that is. So uh, basically what I'm saying is the high part of the person kind of merges in with the group and that's how you're able to transmit energy. So it really takes the three of us, it takes them using my vessel, it takes the high part of them uh, knowing that they agree with it and then them receiving it uh, in order for this uh, energetic transmission to occur. So, um, you know, uh, people will come into sessions and I have great exchanges uh, and the ones that are really rich and go really well are people that are really open people that are believing people that are uh, not scared or uncomfortable and they really want to get the most that they can out of the meeting that we have once in a while it doesn't happen very often i've only had a couple people um, they come a little closed off and and it's not that they're uh, wanting to maybe they've experienced uh, a lot of trauma or uh, things in their life that have really kind of created a, a bit of a shell around them and they're a little defensive and they're a little bit wondering you know they've been hurt before they don't really trust i would say that's a big part of it and I can just feel that energy field close. And so there's very little that I can do uh, in that environment. And uh, oftentimes I will say, uh, I won't say, but the group will say, you know, if you would just open up your energy field, we could really um, expand with you. And there would be so much that we could cover here today in the meeting that we're having. And, you know, most of them have responded to that. Um, but it's really a, a kind of indescribable feeling to feel what it feels like when someone's closed off their uh their um, energy system. And what they're really doing is they're not just closing themselves, they're pinching themselves off from their source as well. So they do feel very alone and separated, but they don't really understand um, exactly why that is. And so, um, Robin, what is it then that um, uh, the collective uh, wants, I guess, to talk about or the messages that they want to spread versus uh, Shiva, for example? Mm -hmm. Uh, the group would like to speak, if that is okay. Yes, of course. They do a better job of describing things uh, in that nature. Uh, the one uh, thing that I would mention to you, how they're going to talk, yeah. Uh, we're going to ask you, when you ask us questions, to keep them uh, one-part questions, because here's what happens. If you ask too many things in a run-on sentence, then we have to use Robin uh, a little bit and have her use her consciousness to hold the questions you are asking, where if you ask one at a time, we can just flow with leaving her out of it. Yes, it's what she prefers, you see. And so your question is, uh, what is the difference between us uh, and the Shiva energy that we are talking about? Well, the Shiva energy is actually a little bit of an elevated consciousness, even beyond what it is that we can perceive. What is an elevated consciousness? People are asking all the time. Uh, what uh, what level of consciousness are you on, or what level can you get to? And we would say it is in, it is infinite. You see, and we are not really constricting or holding ourselves uh, by saying uh, that we are at a specific level of consciousness. But we can tell you that the Shiva energy is uh, up there. Yes, it is of a high level uh, of of contact or communication. You see, she has noticed an uptick uh, in the sessions that she is having and the ability to communicate since this one has added himself uh, to the council of us. Yes, but he is separate. You see, uh, he is not necessarily uh, what we would call associated with us or uh, part of us, uh, but he does uh, from time to time. He is the one that will do the transmitting. However, I, as Athena, the speaker of the group, uh, will be the one that always uses the voice or it is the way that I do it. You see, but at times he will slip in and he will be part of this merging or or, uh, connected to the group that we are. Uh, we also mentioned, or Robin mentioned, that this also happens in a session. What happens really? Uh, we have someone that uh, makes an appointment uh, with us, yes, and then the high part of them in their agreement, it is their agreement, because if they do not agree, there will not be much of a session. They slide into the chair next to us, and then they get this rich, uh, wonderful uh, aha moment, what it feels like to really be plugged into that high part of themselves, and they start to emanate and resonate at that rate. And we would tell you it is a lasting effect that a human has when they allow themselves to have the meeting in this way you see thank you for that and so uh, generally what 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 is it that um you would like i guess 
everyone else watching or humans in general, what would you like them to know about what what is it that that they you know need to be doing, especially as as humanity and whatever path we're on? Yes, uh, uh, we want uh, humans to understand that they are number one. Ex they are experiencers. Uh, they are not expected to be perfect or any level of perfection in the experiences that they are having. They simply agreed that this human tool, uh, this avatar, yeah, that you have, would come here and experience life uh, for its source. You see, but what happens, uh, and what we're really trying to teach humans, is that when they get lodged in the idea that they are somehow shamed or bad, or they have not done something up to standard, or there's some level of perfection that they need to obtain, they uh, tend to separate uh, from their source. They drop in their lower, uh, the lower vibrations of those types of emotions, and then this. Uh, uh, high energy source that actually would like to uh, connect to you, the tool, yes, is not able to do it. And they stay in that same uh, negative emotion of which the experience was created in. However, as they had the charge of emotion uh, released, and it is a charge, we don't deem things as positive and negative. We simply receive a response, a charge, yes, an electrical charge that is then converted in all that is uh, to the level uh, of vibration that we are, which you humans refer to as love. It's not our name to call it love. It is yours, you see. Uh, it's the only thing you can understand that feels good, I guess. Yes. But uh, we would tell you that in the high uh, vibratory level that we exist in, uh, whatever uh, charge of energy, uh, we look at it as only energy. We don't look at it as good and bad or positive and negative. So what happens when that is received, the universe expands and then the human also expands with it. The one that has uh, had the experience, its counterpart also expands. And what was the plan? Uh, this high part of yourself, this God source of you, yes, it wanted to infuse this human tool. It wanted to express itself in its divinity upon this plane uh, that you are on. But as you stay connected in the lower level of where the creation is, it is not able to do this. So what is our job or what are we up to? Yes, we have come here really to assist humans in this understanding, in this love of self, because what is love of self? I love my human for simply experiencing. I'm not going to judge it. I'm not going to condemn it. I'm certainly not going to suppress any of the emotions it has because this will be of no benefit to you at all. Uh, the human will only become lower when you do this. Yes, it wants to be loved. Loved. It wants to be recognized and appreciated for what it is it agreed to do. Um, this is the job uh, that you are supposed to accept uh, in your human. And this, by the way, is what self-love is. Robin used to ask all the time, what is it? How do I love myself? She was very surprised to find out uh, how, how simple it really is. It's just to uh, have no judgment, no condemnation, uh, no uh, thought that you have done something wrong. And then a human would say, well, am I not to improve? Am I to be this lousy human that does these things wrong and then just live in the world this way? And we would say, well, if you would love yourself, you would rise to that level of love and you would be merged with the high part of yourself and you would express as a God, you see, it would happen automatically. There'd be no work to do. People are saying all the time, I have to do this, I have to do that, I have to get better. And we would say in the moment that you have condemned yourself as being lower than what you are, you are uh, doomed. You are not going to achieve what it is you want to achieve, nor can a human do it, you see. The source is the transformer. It is the thing uh, that grows the thing, yes? Great, thank you for that. You know, I had originally planned to have some Q&A or people asking questions later on, but I feel like maybe it might be better if we open it now, if that's okay with you, uh, because then I can ask a question and we'll give uh, some others to submit theirs in time. Would that be all right? Uh, absolutely. Because I, it would be, I would feel a bit selfish, especially if you have a lot to offer and, and talk about. Uh, what better way than to just open the floor up now? So, um, everyone else watching, I guess we'll we'll start the Q and A early. If you are on Telegram, please come through that way. Or if you are in any of the uh, Facebook, um, YouTube, or Twitch, just put three asterisks before your question and uh, just submit it, and uh, we'll take it from there. So until those questions and people start submitting. Uh, I wanted to ask basically, so right now, especially for a lot of us, I feel like uh, for a long time ago, it started for me to to settle my mind to kind of go into the certain direction where that led, led me up to to this day. And I still notice there's still a lot of people that uh, are, you know, not that there's anything wrong with that, but they're not exactly going down that same path. How How do people, for example, especially with all this turmoil, find connection when there's seemingly nothing to connect about? Yes. Uh, basically, the life you are living, you have already lived, you see. 
uh, by all the emoting, by all the choices you have made, uh, the way that you have reacted to the life experience that you have been experiencing with those you have been experiencing it with, you see, has formed uh, the life that is just looking up in front of you. Uh, uh, unfortunately, many humans uh, do not realize that uh, as they emanate, they are creating. And so when you move into a negative emotion or something you would deem uh, as not positive, yes, uh, and you have this feeling, it stings you as a human, you have all these senses, so you're feeling, thinking, uh, sensing, touching, smelling, being, and it's uh, the way that you are yeah so once you go into this uh way there it is very difficult uh to pull yourself out of it and what happens is they start creating unconsciously they get stuck in the emotion uh they are regenerating over and over again uh, things in their experience they don't know why they got them they feel very justified in thinking that someone else has caused it uh that they are not the one that has emanated something that is actually bringing the experience to them uh that they are having so one of the first things that we do right away with a human is really get them to agree and 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 by walking them back and usually we can find it very easily uh, through the emotions that they are feeling as a result of the experiences they are having we can trace that back and it's everywhere in their life you see and so they, they become very aware that this is an emotion that they have emanated a long time before the person that they are being shown it or mirrored it uh, mirrored to them uh, from this other person they realize oh I had this within me long before the meeting and then I had this person that did it and that situation in my job and this thing that happened and so they make the connection and then we very easily get them to agree uh, you you are emanating, you are bringing this to yourself, you see. And then we have ways, uh, different teaching ways that we can actually guide them or encourage them uh, to be the creator that they are, uh, to decide what is the preference. When you have a negative emotion, certainly there is a preference. You do not like something, you do not want to keep feeling it over and over again. If you keep feeling it over and over again, you're going to get it again, you see. So we ask them, we want them to go to the preference. What is it you desire now? You have a lousy relationship, you want a good one. You have no money, you want more money. And then you are to get yourself to that place or point where you can actually feel what that would feel like. What would I do? Uh, what can I what could I get for myself that as I look at it, maybe you light some candles at night, have a nice glass of wine, uh, put a nice robe on. Something makes you feel wealthy. Something makes you feel in love with someone. This would be the way that you would bring a new experience to yourself rather than getting stuck in that energy uh, that actually brought you something that is not to your liking, you see. Hey, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Um, so Ed, uh, Edward Sosa is asking, um, someone needs to change their luck when life is, is, is a bad experience. How can I help myself? Uh, uh, you would help yourself by uh, giving up the idea that anything is happening by luck. There is no luck. There's no hoping. You are the creator of the experiences that you are having. And until you finally accept that fact, you're going to be a victim. And now you are a victim to everyone and everything. Do you want that? Certainly not, you see. So you have to uh, take the reins of the horse. You have to realize that I have been emanating in a way that I'm justifying. We're never going to tell you that experiences aren't painful, that you aren't going to lose loved ones, that you aren't going to have things happen to you that you would prefer not happen. We're never going to tell you that. But you are the picker and chooser of how you will feel about it in your free will. And if you continue to choose to stay in the misery of it, you will have more misery. And this is how you change. You go to the preference. What is preferred by this painful feeling or emotion that you've been experiencing? And now you have to create that atmosphere that we just told you. You have to create this uh, belief and this way of perceiving that you can actually send out a different signal so you can get that which you want, you see. Great, thank you for that. And so, um, I, uh, because uh, Robin was basically talking or, and mentioning earlier also channeling Shiva. Is Would it be rude to ask also for to Shiva uh, say a few words or how would that work? Do you guys kind of have to? He's here. Yes, he is speaking. Uh, the fluidity in which you are receiving this transmission is primarily being determined by him, you see. Okay. Uh, all of uh, the ones that are part of the group are here and he is assimilated here with them. Uh, I, Athena, will always be the one that is transmitting, but make no mistake about it, his energy is here and it is being merged with the energy of us, you see. And so uh, then let me ask you this regarding channeling itself. So is it something that someone that feels drawn to it to, to try it? And if they are, what, what steps should they be taking then? Yes. Uh, as we have told you that everyone is the creator of the experiences that they are having. Uh, many would say, oh, did someone get born with the gift? Did someone have this uh, laid upon them uh, as a child? Some will get it early. Some will get it uh, in the middle. Some will get it as Robin's age and some will get it not at all, you see. And it would be dependent upon, uh, uh, as we have put it, some will say uh, it was a born in gift or an agreement, but we would really say that it was created. There is nothing, hear this, nothing that a human is getting in their experience that they not, are not partaking in 
and in creating of, you see. And we would tell you in Robin's case, uh, she uh, loved it. Yeah, she was watching Chandler's, enjoying Chandler. She had a good friend that was a Chandler. So it was something that she was always exposed to. And in her admiration of it, in her love of it, in her gratitude and enjoyment of it, uh, lo and behold, she became it, you see. Uh, how does anyone become anything, really? How do you become the man that you are running the show that you are running? I'm sure you have done a lot of things that have been in the direction. You've probably admired a lot of other shows. You've probably studied how it is that you could broadcast the best way that you could broadcast. And therefore, you have become an expert at it, you see. And then you have gotten the delivery of the way uh, in the reward that you are getting because of that, you see. Every experience is drawn to you. Uh, humans will think, uh, mm, uh, maybe I cannot attract it to myself. I would like to. Uh, but And then they will say uh, they get negative feelings. They call uh, negativity uh, thoughts. They are getting something that need to be shooed away or something that the human is doing that is wrong. Many try to meditate. They try to shoo out their negative thoughts. And we would tell you, why would you do that? That's the best, most truthful uh, communication that you are getting that you could ever get anywhere, you see. If you say, I'm going to make a million dollars tomorrow and I'm going to uh, run this great business, and you started to state all these things you were going to do, all of a sudden that human would start feeding you with negative thoughts and you'd think, oh, get out, get out. And we would say, that's what you hold within you. That's the preventative thing that's actually keeping you from getting what you want. Any reason that you would not get what you want would be because you're holding a belief or a perception that somehow you cannot have it. Why would you want to douse the negativity in the idea that it is not useful. It's actually telling you, you hold this, you hold this, you hold this, you hold this. That's why you can't have this, you see. But thank you for the explanation. And so does when you're channeling, is the is there some kind of energy exchange happening to worm? Um, because I know from from talking to previous channelers and uh, just listen how they explain certain things um in the very beginning they always talk about it being draining but then they get used to this energy and then it becomes rejuvenating um what is it is actually is it basically them rising up to that frequency where all of you are so that the connection can then can happen easily uh, uh, how is it that you think you are communicating in the body you are in right now you are channeling hmm. We have simply asked Robin to step aside so that she could allow us uh, the convenience of using the body of her, you see. But all humans are to some degree channeling. And we would tell you that it feels very normal. It feels like uh, the most normal thing in the world. It doesn't feel like the bookcase should tip over or a bird should fly through the room or that there should be some big notification that something has somehow happened. The, but the only thing that Robin would say is the flow, uh, the connection, the flow is so uh, wonderful and so uninterrupted and so in perfection. Uh, and this is uh, the connection uh, to the source, yes, to the divine part of yourself that actually creates this kind of flow. But you have access to it. You have access to uh, this divine part of you and in your perception of it in your belief of it if you were to ask it before you began your show today I would like you to come and sit beside me I would like you to accompany me in the flow that I have I would like to say the right things I would like not to study I would like it to go really well and you believed it and you could perceive that you would get that you see great thank you uh, I have a question from NM tumbleweed asking uh, am I creating in the moment my relationships with family members or is it who they are created by them uh, you are the individual creator of the experience that you're having, and no one can create in your experience except for you, you see. You could agree to their view of you. You could agree uh, to them tormenting you, and then in that way they could have an effect upon your experience, but you would have to agree to it in order for it to be part of you, you see. So uh, you are the one that is uh, creating everything that you are experiencing. And when you finally uh, understand that and you finally uh, utilize that uh, power that you have by feeling and then mastering feeling. Master doesn't not feel. A master knows that a feeling is creating a preference, and it simply drops the feeling and goes to the preference, and then it starts to emanate as the preference, and then therefore receives the preference. That's all a master does, you see. Great, thank you. And um, so so when, you, when you're channeling, is there, I mean, I know it's the same a silly question to ask, especially after all that we've heard you explain. But mm -hmm. is there also then a subconscious energy exchange also happening with everyone listening with with all of you and, and us just observing? 
Yes. Uh, uh, we have stated before that the Kundalini rising and the completion of it within the body of Robin has created a magnetism or uh, something that is very uh, uh, beneficial uh, to us as being channelers. Yes. So uh, those that align to us in the vibratory level on which we emanate to, uh, just like you are, uh, the family members that you are with, the people that you are in interaction with, you are at a similar or a close uh, rate of vibration or stream of consciousness that makes this access accessible to you, you see. And so uh, this is how we would explain it. So uh, uh, in answer to your question, uh, we are, uh, we're losing the, the thought pattern now, but uh, in, in essence, uh, we are a match or uh, a vibratory uh, family. Let's all of us are, you are, everyone is uh, in these streams of consciousness or these soul groups that they travel in, you see. Okay, I see. So I guess alike attracts alike, as we say. <laughs> Absolutely. Sometimes, well, let's just say this, elaborate, as long as you have brought that up. Sure. Sometimes not like attracts like. So perhaps you hate someone and then uh, you are uh, you could be matched with someone that loves everyone, you see. Yeah, opposites can match. It can be an attractive quality. You could be a person uh, that is very frightened uh, of being robbed and then be an attractive person to a robber, you see. Or you could be a person that is not afraid of being robbed and then never see a robber. It could attract uh, all different ways. I see. Okay. Thanks for clarifying that too. And, and so what, uh, so I guess it's whatever it is that each one of us has in mind to do, I guess that should be the most, I guess, uh, most important thing for us and not necessarily worry about what, what others think then just, um, yes, we have family and they might disagree with what we're doing, but it should still be, we need to go into the direction that we need to go to and whether they kind of come along or not. Um, if I can say it selfishly, we should just go without them. Uh, the single most important thing you can do as a human is to be a sovereign creator. It's what you came here to be. Uh, no one will affect your experience unless you uh, agree to it, unless you decide what they, how they view you is what you now choose to view yourself as. You see, if you decide to do this, you are giving up your sovereignty and you're becoming uh, part of the masses. You do it all the time. People uh, have their studies about what is good for you, what is not good for you, uh, what will make you live long, what will make you die soon, whatever it is, yeah? And so as you look at it, you don't pay attention to how you feel, and really you should, because as you feel terrible when you look at one of your studies, uh, this is the notification from the high part of yourself that you are now joining in mass consciousness, something that will be part of your experience. You're adding it to your own universe, and therefore it could be true for you too, see? It's one of the reasons you don't feel good as you listen to it. Uh, studies that are telling you to eat all vegetables and avoid red meats, perhaps that aligns to you. And perhaps you think, oh, that makes me feel really good. I like to eat that way. I love the color of vegetables. And I love that idea. Now you're in alignment with it. And if you adopt that into your universe, it certainly isn't going to cause you any harm, you see. But many people don't pay attention to this. They don't realize they have a universe that's them around them. This is you. You have your own universe. As you go out and you look around, you feel, you taste, you touch, you think, you like this, you don't like that. And it goes. The universe expands and you expand. You can't get it out. It's an all-inclusive universe that you're a part of. You're never getting rid of it. It's in there. And then they'll get really worried about that. Oh, I shouldn't have thought that thing. I shouldn't have adopted that idea. And we say, you don't have to worry about that because that's all back here. As long as you get right here in the now moment, you start projecting from here what you want to feel like and you keep yourself feeling good. All of those little negativities or things that you inadvertently added when you didn't know any better aren't going to have an effect on your experience. Now you know better. Now you've been told it matters how you feel. It matters matters how you think. And so just go forward, go forward, just pick from here to feel good. Just pick from here the things you want to see in your experience. Just agree to things that you want to see in your experience and close off your ears and your eyes to anything else. Thank you for that. And so um, Tumbleweed is just, I guess, has a follow up question asking. So it's basically asking, so they can feel our vibration in, in this now because we are a vibrational match question mark. Uh, uh, when we are in session with a human, uh, we are very much in touch with uh, the feeling of them. Yes. Uh, so uh, this is primarily happening because of their agreement. Uh, the, the human has made the appointment. The high self has joined them in their agreement to have the appointment. And therefore, through the high self of the person merging and sitting with us, we can now feel the human. Without the high part of the human joining us in the meeting, we can't feel the human, you see. Oh, okay. All right. Thanks for the clarification. Yes. And so um, it seems like right now, the way just generally things are going on this planet, it seems like it's um, um, kind of like a lost cause. Is there still hope for things to kind of still come back together? How do you feel as you say that, I would ask you? 
this is how a man ignores, sorry, yeah, we don't mean to attack the host. Uh, right. This is how a man ignores his uh, guidance system. That doesn't feel good, does it? Does that feel like something you want to be right. uh, no, part of your universe? No, I don't personally. So you have adopted the agreement of what you have read in your masses to be yours. And therefore you are contributing to it. You see? I see. So you are to choose what it is you would love to see in the world. And you are to also know that what others are seeing in the world is rising. Even though it is left let out in negativity, we told you, as it is received by the divine, it comes up to meet that vibration. So there is no negativity. There is none of what you say there is, except for those of you that are stuck here on this plane thinking that mm -hmm. way. That's what's contributing to what you're feeling here on the earth. I see. If you would go to what the earth has become because of all that negativity, and you would decide to meet it in your observation that, I come from love. I want the best. I'm going to notice how I feel when I go to agree with things that don't make me feel good. I'm going to move away from it. You're going to rise in your vibratory level and you're going to assist the masses in coming out of the messes that they are in. But the divine isn't in a mess. It's, it's every bit of energy that's being expended, positive or negative, is increasing to the good. It's not getting worse. As a divine source, we do not see it the way you see it, you see. Hmm. Okay, thank you for that. Yes. I appreciate it. Um, I have a question uh, coming through from uh, from Polly. Let me unmute him real quick. Uh, Polly, you are unmuted on my end. Unmute yourself on yours and please ask your question. <clears throat> yes, can you describe uh, if someone's going through what you mentioned earlier, a kundalini awakening and... Uh, what that process is and if it involves sensations on the body that people may not be used to. Thank you. Thank you, Polly. Um, were you, were you able to hear that? Uh, we were not. Sorry. Oh, okay. I'm Did sorry. You... I don't know how, how that happened. Um, uh, basically, uh, Polly, I'm sorry, I'm bringing you through one more time. Uh, ask her the question one more time, so I'll be paying attention. Must have been technical. Can you hear me? Right no, I can't hear you. Um, no, for some hear reason, you. I have to check my connection to, to Skype. What was it uh, regarding a Kundalini they mentioned earlier? Yes, I was wondering if uh, she could describe how someone would know if they're going through the Kundalini awakening. And if that involves sensations in the body and um, how that process. Oh, he's he's happens. basically asking how uh, would someone know if they're going through the Kundalini of, uh, awakening and the sensations? Yes. Uh, uh, anyone that is driven on a spiritual journey, uh, Robin has just discovered uh, through us, is already having a stirring of their Kundalini. They would not be on the uh, trail that they are on. Yeah. Uh, many humans will uh, uh, come across someone such as us or another spiritual teacher, and it'll just ignite. Uh, they will uh, read everything, uh, research everything, do every practice that they can do, and have no understanding of the drive or the direction that they're going or why they're going in it, you see. And we would tell you that the Kundalini is the underlying current uh, or course. Everyone has it, <coughs> excuse us, at the bottom of the base of their spine. And so uh, dependent upon your evolution of your soul uh, would be the determining time when this would come forward. Excuse us. <coughs> so, <coughs> excuse us. <coughs> this would be the determining factor <clears throat> of when a human would experience this, you see. Okay. Um, let me see here. I'm just um, trying to figure out also at the same time what... Uh, the issue could be on my end here. Sorry about that. Let me see if I have um, some of the questions here that might have come in. <clears throat> we would like uh, to so... complete that <clears throat> when Robin recovers. Yes? Um, okay. We'd like to answer his question in a little bit more depth and make him understand that sure. uh, at first you will be driven spiritually. This will be the first sign or signal that your kundalini is now reacting. Yes? Starting to move. But <clears throat> as you learn in your spiritual journey, you will become aware of this energy. And then it will start to direct you in the readings that you get, uh, the path that you take. Uh, and then pretty soon you will actually pursue it. You will think you're the one pursuing it when in fact it has always been pursuing you, you see. Eventually 
Uh, as you do this, you will have a full-blown rising, such as Robin did, where it pierces all of the energy centers. You can't miss it. Uh, it's very loud, uh, very uh, <clears throat> you feeling. You can feel it. Uh, lots of humming uh, noises, uh, spinning noises. And then there will be a lot of emotional uh, upheaval or things that you will go through uh, over a period of years uh, afterwards, you see. Okay, thank you for that. <clears throat> All right. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'm sorry for those that are uh, currently listening and wanting to ask questions on on Telegram. It's one little option that I overlooked and it wasn't apparent to me that uh, somehow anyone speaking on Telegram is not going over to Skype. So I promise I'll fix it next time. But uh, for now, uh, if you still have a question, I'll pay attention and I'll relay it to to Robin. So or for those that have come through on, on uh, Telegram, I apologize for that. All right, um, Tumbleweeds is asking, um, uh, I'm confused on the work I'm supposed to be doing to raise my vibration. Balancing or clearing or removing what I do not know, um, am I to work on a Kundalini awakening? Any guidance? <clears throat> um, primarily, the most effective thing a human can do on their spiritual journey is to be happy is to be joyful, uh, is to realize that uh, whatever you choose to do that, whatever path you take to obtain that is a worthy one, you see. Uh, if you enjoy uh, spiritual practices, if this is something that uh, brings you happiness, then you are to do it. If you are called to do something, then you should try it. There is no direct path. Uh, there is only your path and the one that feels good to you. Uh, many humans will dabble in or try the paths of others uh, as a means to awaken themselves. We're not going to say that that's something that shouldn't be done or couldn't be done. <clears throat> but the real awakening is coming from within you. And the path or uh, the uh, route that you take uh, is only a, a, a thing that you perceive uh, as a means to it. But it is not necessarily what is the cause of it. Uh, you are the one producing it. Uh, it is the time for you and the life that you are in. And all of the other things are nothing more than stimulators of your desire, stimulators of your belief and your perception, uh, which then create, yes, the experience that you're wanting to have. Great. Thank you for that. <clears throat> and so is there a general, uh, I guess, at the end of the day, then basically everyone move in the direction that, that you feel you need to and do the best job you can um, and eventually you will get to where, where you're heading, basically. And so just to sum it all up, so because I'm pretty sure we can ask the same question you know, maybe 10, 20 different times, you know, but I'm just trying to sum it up to just kind of give, give an overall point. Would you agree with that? Yes, uh, many humans think that uh, there's some level of perfection or uh, that they're going to attain something um, in themselves uh, via the route of spirituality uh, when actually uh, the giving up of all of that idea or the ideal that you're going to somehow be uh, uh, higher than what you already are, yeah, uh, is actually the thing uh, that is the most connective uh, in a human. Uh, surrender, really. Uh, if anyone were to ask us one thing to attain uh, a connection with themselves, it would be just surrendering to life. It would be not trying to change experiences that are occurring, not condemning things that are happening, uh, not trying to force others into agreeing with what it is that you agree with. All of these things are creating resistance within you and actually preventing you from the connection that you're longing for. Uh, if you could just live in your sovereignty, live like you're on this planet by yourself uh, in happiness, in joy, in choosing uh, in this way, uh, and then not denying others their experience in knowing that they need it, uh, in knowing that eventually all of them are going to come to the same place, all of them are going to have an evolution of themselves, and you are not the one that's going to call it forth. They are. They have to go through these things. They have to have these experiences, these ways of thinking uh, that maybe you don't agree with. This is uh, the evolution of the soul that is them, you see. Uh, unfortunately, humans have uh, fallen into the trap that uh, they are the good people. They are the ones that are doing the work. They are the spiritual ones, and everyone else uh, is something else. Uh, and then we would tell you this is wrong thinking. Uh, this is a negativism that uh, humans have adopted uh, in an egoic spirituality belief. Uh, so our advice to you would be uh, to go about your merry way and let others go about their merry way. And then in this way, uh, you will come into complete alignment with your source. And then you viewing them in love instead of condemnation and judgment when you see something that they are doing that you prefer they were 
weren't doing might be the very thing that allows them to see themselves that same way, you see. Good, thank you for that. Um, so Mommy Sopika is asking, so are we to are we to blame only ourselves for everything that happens to us? Uh, do we manifest everything that happens to us? Uh, you are to love yourself for every experience. Where do we ever say anything about blame? Didn't we tell you to love your human for the experiences it was having? Uh, you're into blame. If you're into blame, uh, then you are just becoming the human. You're stuck in the mud of the experience. If you understood that you're not the human, that the human is uh, basically reacting uh, to its life it's living, to the past lives it's have, and to its lineage. That's all part of it. Some of it you don't even know why you're reacting the way that you are. So how could you condemn yourself for it? You have to just come to this understanding that you are what you are. Uh, and then in this love of self, uh, you know what you want. Uh, she's talking about blame yourself. What would you blame yourself? Did you do something you're ashamed of or that you feel as though is not loving or worthy? Uh, why would you do that? Why would you just not know what you want because of it? Why would you just not know by that behavior or by that thing that happened what you've really become, what you really desire? And then be that. Just move away from it. Don't become it. Just leave it and go away from it and go to what you want. You see. Great. Thank you for that. Um, <clears throat> So, when uh, so can I uh, ask a question generally about what we perceive uh, beings like such as extraterrestrials or these uh, flying ships and all these different things? Uh, are they kind of uh, in this from the similar dimension where you are at, or is it just? Um, can you please speak more on that subject about what what are they, who are they, and why are they here from your perspective? Uh, we are uh, not focused in a physical reality at this time. Uh, Robin had an experience once where she actually uh, saw herself lying on the bed uh, and was quite surprised by it. She'd been asking over and over in her mind, uh, will I still know who I am or will I not exist anymore when I leave this plane or I'm gone out of my body? Uh, all it is, or uh, her source popped her out of her body uh, and said, are, are you still Robin? thought it was quite funny. She was quite surprised to feel pretty much just the same as she does when she was in it, otherwise, other than she could not operate that uh, tool, you see. And so uh, in answer to your question, uh, uh, you could be a terrestrial, uh, to a terrestrial, yeah? Uh, they're all infinite planes of existence uh, and of life forms and uh, experiences, uh, both uh, uh, mental uh, and uh, physical, yes? And so uh, to we know that your show is based upon uh, uh, what you would call extraterrestrials, but really all you're talking about are different life forms uh, on different levels or planes of existence based upon uh, their ability to perceive the environments that they are in, you see. Uh, what makes uh, anyone uh, move up? Uh, we talk about the 5D reality coming, for example. Uh, what makes that a reality is uh, what the conversations we're having right now. The idea that you can now believe that you're something more than uh, just a human packed in a body and that that was what you were. Now you're thinking, uh, maybe uh, I'm something else. Maybe uh, I have this high source. Uh, maybe I am creating the life that I'm creating. And in that, maybe this expansion occurs and you you open to a new level of perception. And this is why uh, we tell humans when we finally get to the 5D reality, a lot of the creating in, in suffering, uh, it's not going to happen anymore. And they can't perceive that because it's happening. So they're looking at it. They're not able to move in their consciousness uh, to this new level uh, of emanating at a higher vibration. But once uh, this it will happen very gradually, we always use a description, like you go uh, from puberty into adulthood. Uh, nobody remembers exactly when it happened. They turn around one day and think, oh, here I am. I can have a child. I would like to get married. Somehow I've changed overnight. And this is what's going to occur as your consciousness elevates. It's not going to be something that you can track moment to moment. It's going to be this very gradual uh, unfolding of expansion of understanding and of allowing and of wisdom and knowledge being unlocked within you and and this is how you will continue uh, to expand and then as you talk about your extraterrestrials uh, we would tell you that it is a more expansive level of consciousness to many degrees and it doesn't mean that they haven't been human before and then decided to be now terrestrial you see but it is by uh, uh, their ability to expand is what will bring you to higher and higher uh, levels as you would deem it uh, we would call it just expansion of consciousness we don't really like to call it levels uh, it's just your ability to hold what you can hold you see Great. Thank you for that. And so um, I just basically then, you know, just wanted to to ask you if there's something that you would like to basically finish up with or leave us with, um, because I appreciate your time and Robin's time for doing this. And uh, we're 
coming very close to, to the end, so I wanted to leave you as much time as possible. So uh, please, you have the floor. Yes, uh, we would like to finish up with the concept that uh, don't agree with everything that you hear on uh, everything that you read, because you are the creator of the experiences that you're having. And although you may be witnessing others having some that you don't really prefer, uh, then don't align to them. Don't watch that uh, type of news. Don't listen to that type of broadcast. Don't adopt the study that makes you feel negative as you see it or read it. Uh, decide for yourself uh, in your happy uh, go lucky way what it is you want to experience, how you want to feel in the experience that you have and then create from there. Uh, many humans want to justify, uh, this one is bad, this one is stolen, uh, this one has done this terrible thing. Uh, and, and we would tell you that in that justification, uh, you are not being accountable. Uh, you are using someone who is mirroring something back to you as a reason for you to emanate in negativity and therefore attract negativity into your experience, you see. Nobody cares whether the one was bad or not, whether they actually stole or not. All that the universe cares is what it's receiving from you because it's returning to you. The other one is out of the picture. You're never going to hurt anyone by what you think, by what you feel. Every single motion that you have is being tallied up and accounted for and directed at you, you see. When you finally get this concept and this understanding how important it is that you emanate in a way that is about you and not another person, it's not about another person. We don't care what they've done. We don't care how bad you think it is because we know that as you decide to become that feeling towards them, now you are going to get more likeness of that emanated back at you. That's how you create. It's as simple as that. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I'm sure everyone else watching to appreciate this as well. Thank you for coming through. You're most welcome. Uh, we'll let Robin pop back into the room for a moment uh, for a Thank brief you. hello. Uh, and we have enjoyed this interaction and are grateful for the experience of it. Yes? Thank you. I'm sorry about the coughing, Jag. I've got a little bit of allergies and the human part just had to cough. That's all right. No problem at all. You know, I've, the allergies have been bad here too. Uh, yeah, just... I've really been having a lot of them here lately. Right. You know, it was like, you know, for me, especially when allergies kick in, I get that pain from the back of my eyes. I was like, I hope I could do the show today. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, Robin, thank you very much for that. It was, that was awesome. I appreciate you for doing it and, and sharing that with all of us. Um, basically, as I mentioned uh, earlier in the show, I have all your links in the description below where people go and can check them out. Um, if you don't mind kind of verbally uh, reiterating them again. Um, well, I have my website. If anyone's uh, interested in private sessions, it's athenaintruth.com. I also have a regular podcast and a YouTube. It's also under Athena in Truth. And I have my book available on Amazon if anyone is interested uh, in Athena's teachings. All right. Well, great. Thank you. Thank you very much. So everyone else watching, uh, thanks again. I hope you got your questions, answers. Thanks again for tuning in. Um, Tune back in on next Wednesday at 7 p.m. Um, might do open lines, might have a guest. Uh, it, it would be a surprise. So again, to all of you, thank you. Robin, thank you as well. And I uh, hope we can do this again sometime. Thank you. I'd love to do that. All right. All right, everyone. Take care.